In this video, we will understand what is VXLAN, what is ODV, what are their feature set and how are they related to each other and what are their differences. So here we start. Need for a layer 2 extension. Let us say we have two data centers, data center 1 and data center 2. Now, as part of the layer 2 requirement, let us say here we have a V motion which needs to be carried out where this VM would be destroyed and corresponding to that another one would be implemented in, in the other data center which is the key requirement in case of V motion. Now for that to happen, the underlying infrastructure should allow the layer 2 extension to happen. However, whatever solutions we use, they are not scalable enough. And that is where some of the key features of VXLAN and OTV allow that scalable layer 2 extension to happen. Now, let's understand each one of them in detail. That is what is VXLAN, what is OTV and how are they similar and different to each other. To start with VXLAN. VXLAN in full form, it means virtual extensible LAN that is local area network. So it was implemented rather provisioned as a joint collaboration of VMware, Cisco and Arista. So it is a layer to extension or basically an overlay encapsulation technology which runs on top of the underlying infrastructure. The benefit is that it allows us to extend the layer 2 across layer 3 boundaries that is from data center 1 to data center 2 a layer 2 extension can happen even though there may be MPLS point to point or different layer 3 type of setups which are the underlying one across the data center. And finally one of the key benefit of VXLAN is 16 million plus segments can be created of VXLAN which is a highly scalable solution that VXLAN can provide to its customers. Okay, in that case, we have DC1 on the left side and DC2 on the right side. So the benefit of VXLAN is that leaf 1 is here and leaf 2 is here. VXLAN can be implemented across leaf 1 and leaf 2 that is within the data center across leaf devices and between leaf 2 and leaf 3 also which is across data center 1 and data center 2. In fact, layer 3 and rather leaf 3 and leaf 4 can also have VXLAN or interestingly leaf 1 can also have a layer 2 extension of VXLAN between leaf 1 and leaf 4. However, it is important for us to understand how that happens. So in that case, when the frame from here VM which is connected to leaf 1 reaches the leaf 1, then this device is the VTEP which is virtual tunnel endpoint. It will perform that MAC to UDP encapsulation and form a VXLAN tunnel to let us say it has to go to its destination which is VM in as part of the leaf 2 setup. So a VXLAN tunnel would be formed that is the layer 2 frame would be encapsulated into the UDP and then sent across this layer 2 3 network onto the layer 2. And then this leaf which is another virtual tunnel endpoint this will decapsulate that UDP header and then send the layer 2 frame towards that VM. So the benefit of this is that over a layer 3 network also we can have the communication of layer 2 happening. So same is the case let us say leaf 2 wants to communicate to leaf 3. So here also encapsulation by this VTAP and decapsulation by the leaf 3 which is the other side of VTAP and then frame can be forwarded from the device the endpoint which is connected to leaf 2 VTAP and the device which is connected to leaf 3 which is another VTAP.
So this is how VXLAN encapsulation happens, decapsulation happens, and layer two frames can be sent within the data center and cross the data centers. Now let's understand a little bit about OTV. So OTV is Overlay Transport Virtualization. It's a Cisco proprietary one only. And as VXLAN, it is also responsible for stretching the layer to cross the data center. So it is important for us to understand that VXLAN was within the data center, that is data center intra communication, as well as data center intercommunication. However, OTV will not be responsible for intra DC communication to happen, but only the inter DC. And finally, the scalability part of it. Only 4096 VLANs can be further extended by the OTV, which is slightly a limitation as compared to VXLAN, which is much more scalable. OTV and its setup. So here we can see on the left hand side, we have a West data center and on the right side, we have the East data center. Here, there are some terminologies which are fundamentally to the OTV and it, these are the quintessential rather typical terminologies which are required in the OTV setup. So the first one is the edge device. In this data center, we can see this is one edge device and in the other data center, we have another edge device. So edge device sits on the edge of the data center. It is responsible for all the OTV functions and it connects to other data centers via the OTV center. Next, internal interfaces. What we can see here, the inside part of this edge network, which is connecting to other devices which are from the internal LAN part. These are called the internal interfaces on data center west and on the data center east also. These are the internal interfaces. So internal interfaces are the layer two interfaces on the edge devices. They can be trunk or access ports. Moving ahead, the join interface. Join interface is basically the layer three interface, which is on the both sides and it connects to the IP network. And join interface is the source for OTV encapsulation traffic towards the remote OTV edge devices. Next, the overlay interface. So this is the overlay interface on both sides and OLA interface is the logical bridge interface between the data center sites. All the OTV configuration are specifically explicitly defined by a user on this overlay interface. The frame, the Mac that comes from here, the device that is via the internal interface that is encapsulated by the edge device sent over the, o, the OTV network, the core network via the OTV setup and the edge device on the other side further decapsulates it. That is how the OTV communication is happening where it is extending layer 2 across a layer 3 boundary. Another aspect is that STP. STP in case of OTV is not common at both the end. So, STP information will not be extended by OTV across both these data center sites and the MAC in IP encapsulation will take place by the edge device that we earlier discussed about. Now the differences that we discussed about VXLAN and the OTV, this is a detailed table about that. So full form we know about VXLAN, it is virtual extensible LAN and OTV is overlay transport protocol. OTV is Cisco proprietary, but not VXLAN. The key purpose of the VXLAN is within the data center extension of the layer two segments, 
और अक्रॉस द डेटा सेंटर और मे बी कैंपस बट ओ टी वी इज ओनली लिमिटेड टू बी इंप्लीमेंटेड एज ए डेटा सेंटर इन द कनेक्ट बिटवीन द डेटा सेंटर नाउ सपोर्टेड हार्डवेयर वी कैन सी हेयर फॉर वी एक्स लैन एंड द ओ टी वी एंड द ओनली डिफरेंस वी कैन फाइंड हेयर इज आई एस आर फोर फोर फाइव वन विच इज सपोर्टेड बाई वी एक्स लैन नॉट ओ टी वी कन्वर्जेंस फॉर वी एक्स लैन इज फास्ट एज कंपेयर टू ओ टी वी एंड इनफैक्ट वी एस लैन इज ऑल्सो यूज फॉर एन एस एक्स एंड ए एस सी आई एस वाई नेक्स एस सेवन के डेटा सेंटर स्विच इज सपोर्ट द ओ टी वी सम ऑफ द टर्मिनोलॉजीज विच आर रिलेटेड टू वी एक्स लैन इज वी टेप एंड वी एन आई वाइल एच डिवाइस इंटरनल इंटरफेस जॉइन इंटरफेस एंड ओवरले आर रिलेटेड टू ओ टी वी नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द कंट्रोल प्रोटोकॉल वी एक्स लैन यूज फ्लड एंड लर्न और बी जी पी और मे बी ई वी पी एल एज ए कंट्रोल प्रोटोकॉल हाउ एवर ओ टी वी यूज आई एस आई एस फाइनली इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्केलेबिलिटी दैट वी अर्ली डिस्कस्ड अबाउट सिक्सटीन मिलियन फॉर वी एक्स लैन एज कंपेयर टू फोर जीरो नाइन सिक्स बाई ओ टी वी सो इंट्रा डी सी विद इन द डेटा सेंटर वी एक्स लैन सपोर्ट वाइल इट इज नॉट सपोर्टेड बाई ओ टी वी एंड क्रॉस द डेटा सेंटर दैट इज इंटर डी सी कम्युनिकेशन is supported by both of them and finally load balancing over multiple links let us say both of data centers have multiple links so vxlan supports that however otv is somewhere limited it does provide but it is somewhere limited and only can be done based upon the vlan ids so that takes us to the end of the video hope it was informative and please don't forget to like and subscribe thank you